this is the overhead camera setup I'm taking over the guest bedroom um, as you can see so a couple lights here's the camera that shows me sitting there working and this is the overhead setup there's a, a Panasonic camera and these poles here are third hand brand um, they're designed for carpenters and other people that need some kind of temporary support the last time I used them was to put this crown molding up. My brother helped me. Some three-piece three crown molding. So, in my situation, I've got the two third-hand poles clamped from floor to ceiling, plus a piece of scrap run across them, also held in place with clamps. Then, the camera, I made a mount here just out of a block of wood, and I needed that spacer so that I could put the AC adapter in instead of the battery so I can run the thing constantly without having to worry about the battery. So these third hand gizmos are sort of expensive. I'm going to show you a way that you can make something just as good at least for this application with stuff that you can get practically for free. See more projects standing in the wings waiting for me to make a video. This is the camera mount on the board uh, for the overhead. You can see it's just a block of wood with a quick mount uh, screwed to it. And the reason that uh, I have that block of wood there is so I have room to change the battery out in the camera uh, without taking it off the mount. Um, but I also have this which is a battery AC powered battery substitute plugs right in the back of the camera and when that's in the door the camera door is open so it can't lay flat up against that board it's got to have some place for the camera door to be so I'm going to replace this with um, an adjustable mount but that will be a different video so here's how to make the your own rack now you could probably use a 2x2 two two. I don't know if they come in 10 foot lengths or not uh, most Two by twos are going to be eight foot. Your ceiling is going to be eight foot two or eight foot four inches, depending on your house. Uh, if it's longer, you just have to use a different piece of wood. So, I had a scrap piece of wood laying around. You can see that. I can't tell if what I'm showing overhead. Uh, just drilled a hole in it and countersunk a screw. I left it in so it would pivot. That's important for later. Um, and then you get one of these. These are leg levelers or furniture levelers. Uh, you can get these in boxes of two or four, usually at Home Depot and Lowe's or Amazon. They're not terribly expensive. I had these laying around. This part right here is a T-nut. What you're going to do is drill a hole in the end of your 2x4 or 2x2 or whatever you decide to use, and you drive that in there with a hammer. So then, you can thread in your leg leveler, and of course that's driven in there. And then you put it in between the floor and the ceiling, and you adjust the height until it's snug. And you can adjust the height easily by turning this. That's why I left that so it pivot on the top, right? Make it higher and lower. Now. To protect your paint on the ceiling. Uh, on mine, I had some of these extras laying around. These are knee pads and elbow pads, mil spec. You have to have a clothing that accepts them. Um, and those are not sticky. That goes up against the ceiling, it protects it pretty well, and it's not sticky. Now, depending on what you have, like here's another piece of foam that I have that's nice and soft that you could probably even use on a popcorn ceiling. Uh, here is just a Ziploc bag with some cardboard in it. That will conform to the ceiling a little bit and a Ziploc will prevent the, uh, the bag from sticking to the ceiling. You can put the foam in a bag as well. So that's all there is to it. So you put this up, get it 
tension between the floor and the ceiling. You don't want it too tight. It has to be uh, snug so it doesn't fall down, but not so tight that you crack the ceiling plaster. So then you take a cross piece, just a piece of scrap, or you probably have to go to the Home Depot and buy some, and you can clamp this in place like I did with these uh, steady hand or helping hand, whatever these things are called, or you can just do it with a couple of screws. I suggest a couple of screws. And then I'll show you pictures of how I mounted a couple different ways. You have the um, just a block of wood with a quick mount, or you can fasten a tripod upside down to the overhead rack. Now, I disassembled my tripod because the legs were no good anyway, but you could um, take a brand new one and just mount it up there with the legs on it, uh, rig it up there some way, and you have a nice adjustable overhead rack. When I was editing, I noticed I left some things out about how to mount the camera. So this is the, the gizmo that I use. This mounts on the camera bottom. And this mounts on the tripod. Or in this case, the, just the board. Now you can get these on Amazon or just about anywhere. These were $15 a piece. So I'm not going to bother to look up the names and stuff. You guys can figure that out. Um, these are just quick release gizmos for the camera. And I bought one for each camera and one for each tripod. They come in. You can buy this part separately or this part separately. I bought a bunch of pairs and a few, no, a few of these because I have more tripods than cameras. So that's the, the best way to do it because it's real easy to get the camera on and off. Here's a cheap way. Um, my original plan was to use this. This is, I don't even know what it's called. It's a bolt with a wing nut head on it. I had this in my shop and I thought I would just have the cross piece, drill a hole in it, 5 16 hole, put this through there and adjust it uh, with shims back here, washers or something else, until the quarter inch bolt stuck out just the right amount to thread into my camera. So you probably don't have one of these because that's an odd duck, but it's easy to get an eye bolt. I just dug around my shop and found this one. It's longer than necessary. You just need to have one with enough threads to accomplish this. You have a couple nuts for a jam, a washer up against it, drill a hole, comes through, and you have just the right amount of adjustment to thread into the bottom of your camera. And that'll work pretty well.